Hello, good afternoon. My name is Paula Wethington, and I'm one of the reporters at the Monroe News. And with me is my coworker Dean Kuzno, who has been at the Monroe News for a very long time, and we'll get into that story too. Carolyn Woodico, who's one of our copy editors, is doing our camera work today. Um, in light of the fact that we're now 40 years past the great blizzard of 1978, and I'm using that phrase for a good reason, um, we wanted to talk to you all about... Okay, are we back? Yeah. All right, we're back. Hey, great for... Um, this is why we have a camera person watching the camera so she can tell me when we lose the connection. Anyway, back to our program today. Um, our topic is epic winter storms that have hit Monroe County. My name is Paula Wethington. This is Dean Kuzno. And we're both reporters here at the Monroe News. The reason why we're hosting this particular topic is Dean and I both kind of have an interest in the weather. And over the years when we used to sit next to each other, we probably annoyed people telling stories about weathers, weather situations that have happened. Our main topic today is the Great Blizzard of 1978, and I'm going to use that phrase for a reason. Um, but we have some other stories and stats that Dean has collected over the years. Because, as it turns out, he's the person who keeps all our weather books and stats for the Monroe News. And then I get involved because I'm the one who posts uh, the school closings and the severe weather alerts on MonroeNews.com. So... Let's get started. And Dean, do you remember why it's called the Great Blizzard? Yes, I do. Uh, it was a very memorable storm because it blew not just one day. It was like three days of blowing and drifting snow. And it made a big impact on the county because everything was pretty much brought to a halt as far as any travel was concerned. Yeah, and that's and, and that kind of also distinguishes it from a blizzard that happened the previous January, um, in January 77, with a different set of circumstances and different weather hassles that was just known as Blizzard of 77. So the one in 78 was called the Great Blizzard. Um, and I have to admit that um, both Dean and I actually remember this storm. <laughs> Yes, the uh, storm in 77 at, at the end of January was remembered more for its bitter cold because uh, it went below zero four days in a row, and the, the worst day was a minus 19 on January 29th of that year, and that was one of the coldest temperatures we had recorded since we started keeping records back in 1917. So that, that storm was more remembered for its cold the blizzard of 78 was more remembered for its drifting snow because of the amount of snow that fell. Yeah, and that's <clears throat> when people might even say talk about the blizzard years. They're talking usually about 77 and 78. And what made 77 even more difficult to deal with was that there was an energy crisis at the time. So it was not uncommon to people who were already being told to dial back your heating bills because there's an energy shortage and it's the coldest winter people can ever remember. Um, but 78 was just epic. There's no other word for epic, legendary. I've joked around to people, whatever you've heard about 78, it really did happen. <laughs> we're not just making it up, us old timers, we're not making this stuff up. It was really, really bad. Um, do you got, do you want to run down some of the stats on that one? Sure. The, okay. The actual measurement was only about 10 inches. However, when you get, uh, winds blowing at 30 or 40 miles an hour consistently over two days or three days it just blows the snow all over the place and and the drifts were everywhere and uh you couldn't go you couldn't go anywhere i remember getting not being able to go to work that day because i was stuck in erie uh and not being able to travel and uh many people of course everything uh, schools, uh, government, uh, all kinds of services were shut down. So mm -hmm. it was a very, the county was paralyzed for almost uh, two weeks, really. Yeah, I wouldn't be, I wouldn't be surprised about that. Um, of interest, one of the stories I've heard over the years is that the Monroe News actually did publish that day. And some deliveries were made in the city, but not far. Which very few deliveries were made. Very few deliveries. <laughs> I was impressed they made any at all because I, at the time, I was 10 years old. And I was living on the other side of Toledo in a town called Fremont, and that particular newspaper printed but never even tried to deliver. So you, we got Thursday, Friday, Saturday papers on Saturday, and no out-of-town papers came into town for almost a week. 
So I was very impressed to hear that, you know, my colleagues at the Monroe News, after I came part of this team, that, well, you guys actually tried. <laughs> you actually tried to deliver the paper. There were so many impacts, though, from that storm because there were so many shortages, especially food mm -hmm. shortages. Mm -hmm. uh, you could go in a grocery store after the storm and there wouldn't be anything there because people gobbled up what there was and the delivery people couldn't make it in to restock the shelves. So it was, uh, you were pretty much on your own at home with mm -hmm. very little uh, food. And that explains why to this day when there's... Um, winter storm watch goes out and people are flocking to the grocery stores and maybe these days they don't know why they just know it's a thing to do okay we know why okay <laughs> we know why because the 78 storm um, as I was looking through the records yes there was a winter storm watch two days before the storm hit but the blizzard warning um, came fairly late um, these this was two storms that collided in the atmosphere so whereas these days we probably would have got maybe two or three head, days heads up, hey, this is a really bad storm, you guys gotta pay attention. Yeah. People went to bed the night before not knowing it was gonna be bad. And in Monroe County in particular, and then Toledo area too, Bowling Green and Fremont, this seemed to be like the epicenter, the worst of the impact of that storm, because uh, while I'm upstate they got snow, in this pocket, we got rain first, and then the ice. Ice and snow. And, and then the snow. <clears throat> the mix was just, uh... It was unbelievable. You, you couldn't deal with it. You couldn't deal with it. And thousands and thousands of people lost electricity. They were out for three or four days. So imagine no electricity. Um, imagine that you got caught by surprise by this storm. So now you got little kids who, to feed. And, well, bread and milk, okay. You, would, you could make peanut butter sandwiches. But that's where all this comes from that people don't understand. Why, why are we going to the store to buy bread and milk? It's because of the blizzard in 78 where people were stranded. <laughs> And sometimes you have maybe too much panic buying now mm -hmm. because people overreact, but they want to be, be, be prepared in case they do get stranded in their homes, and that's yeah. what happened back yeah. then. Yeah, yeah. So some of the impact of this storm, that when we're, as Dean and I have done anniversary stories, we found out, um, and what we could remember, um, here in Monroe County, 16,000 people lost power. Um, some people lost telephone service. There were several hundred cars stuck on I-75 between Monroe and Flat Rock. And then some of these people end up getting housed in American Red Cross shelters everywhere. Uh, one funny story I remember about that weekend is that uh, in Erie, stranded people on 75 were being brought to the Erie VFW uh, post, and they just happened to be having their muskrat dinner that night. So they these visitors uh, had the... Uh, chance of eating muskrat if they wanted to, but of course some were a little bit leery about trying <laughs> that uh, that wild dinner, but uh, it was available and some people loved it. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. I mean, that's probably one of the funniest stories of the storm, but, um, and there was also three babies born in Monroe County during the storm, and that was a very serious situation I can imagine because my brother-in-law was actually born during the storm in Ohio. And while well, it took two hours to get two miles to the to the hospital, was the story I've been told down that side of the family. Um, they were making rescues with yeah. snowmobiles back then. Snowmobiles, <clears throat> four wheel drives. The four wheel drives were just coming into uh, yeah. being used uh, at that time, so there weren't that many. There were more snowmobiles at that time than ATVs and the four four wheelers. So you had um, no communication. Um, little food, little food, little warning, and you're stuck and you have no power. So what are you gonna do? Um, golly, I remember my house had heat, but we had no electricity. Um, I remember being very, very bored after a while. And <laughs> but you can't go anywhere. It was the drifts were huge. Sales of wood stoves uh, yes went up after that blizzard. Uh, a lot of people were going out and buying uh, mm -hmm. wood stoves and things to heat their house. Yeah, yeah. So, um, and, uh, and unfortunately, too, there's also 20 deaths in Michigan that have been directly attributed to the blizzard of 78. Um, a lot of them were heart attacks or traffic crashes, and they just couldn't get people to the hospital fast enough. So even though that was the epic, the epic storm, there have been others that are legendary. Right. It wasn't the biggest snowstorm uh, Monroe County had. Uh, our most
most memorable storm, well, in terms of inches, had to be the 20-inch snowfall we, we got on December 1st, 1974. Now, that was before I started working at the news, but I remember being stranded in Erie again. Okay. That was a Sunday afternoon, a Sunday, and it just snowed all day. And I remember spending a night, that night, in a shelter with my dad because we tried to go out and rescue my sister, who was stranded nearby, and we never made it. And my dad was a road commissioner at the time, and even he couldn't get through, and we both ended up staying overnight at the wow. Mason Middle School uh, auditorium or, or gym uh, because that was the shelter. And it, Monroe it, County got hit the worst with that one too. That was that was a lake effect storm. So if you've heard about the lake effect here in, hitting Erie and Cleveland, Monroe County got hit with lake effect, and I lived through that storm on the other side of Ohio too, and it was pretty bad even on you know from the direction I was in in Sandusky County at the time trying to explain to friends who lived about two mile, you know, two hours south of us that, yes, there was a very bad snowstorm and they didn't believe us. People on 75 and 23 oh. were just stranded. I mean, they, they just were stranded right there on, on the roadway and they were trying mm -hmm. to bring people into the shelters. But again, back there, all the rescues were made pretty much with snowmobiles. Snowmobiles, snowmobiles. And you didn't have cell phones, so but a lot of people had CB radios at the time, and that was kind of how you would alert somebody, at least within listening distance, or the truckers would keep an eye out for you. Um, so these days, if you start hearing things about this is what you should do to protect, you know, pack your car, have some supplies in your car for uh, in case you get stranded, and you think that might happen just upstate, mm, in the 1970s we got a good hard lesson, and you know this yes. can happen in you know this part of the state. Um, any other, I've got some other storms that I'm thinking of that are really epic. Which ones do you know about? Well, according to our list, uh, the, the second biggest storm was 19 inches uh, at the end of February and early March. It was like a three-day blow there. Uh, but again, that was way back in 54, so mm -hmm. none of us were there. Yeah. Uh, uh, then we had a 13 and a half inch storm on January 14th, 1992. And after that, we had many storms between 10 and 13 inches that fell, and those make up our top 10. Some of the really severe winters that we've had were not just one big snowstorm, but like a series of bad storms. Maybe January 99 days. was a good example. Um, you know, just repeated, repeated storms. And then another example of that would have been January 2014, you know, where you've got, yeah. you don't even have time to dig out from one storm until the next one comes in. The, the winter of 2013 and 2014 was our worst winter because we had the most snow, about 78 inches, oh. and we also had the coldest weather. Uh, we had 21 days where the temperature went below zero, and in February of that year, it went below zero 11 days. So the winter of 2013 and 2014 was the worst for Monroe the worst. County. The worst from Monroe County. Okay. So, I, I guess these days if you start hearing people saying, oh, schools never closed when I was growing up, it, it may have just kind of depended on when they were growing up because I personally remember under Blizzard of 78 in Ohio, my school was canceled for a week. Yes. Just flat out a week. And I'm, it was. It looked like it was pretty similar here too. It was I, even longer. Even longer. For some okay. school districts uh, back in the South County area yeah. especially. Yeah. So... So Monroe County, yeah, we've we've been we've been the target zone for quite a few winter storms. Um, January twenty sixth, nineteen seventy eight is you know, Friday is, is will be the fortieth anniversary of that particular blizzard, and we know there's been people talking about it all all week and memories and again, if you happen to remember what you have, tell the stories because there's not going to be too many people who can even remember much of it anymore. Anything else? No, there's been a lot of storms since then, which may blur your memories. May blur the memory. It's all bit. one big white blur after a while. But uh, this is still a winter wonderland around here. Uh, we do have our mild winters. We've had two mild winters in a row, but mm -hmm. we, we started out pretty harsh this year. We'll have yeah. to see what happens. We'll have to see what happens. Okay. Well, thanks for tuning in. And for Dean, Carolyn, and myself, this has been the Monroe News. Thank you very much.